What's up guys, I'm your host Glenn and today I got a good one for you. I'm gonna show you guys how to take simple concrete forms and how to add a little touch of wood to it so you can enhance that cool project that you always wanted to tackle, right? But before we get into it, today's video is brought to you by Squarespace, an all-in-one platform that allows you to take your creativity and express yourself the way you want the world to see. I'm talking about building a website of your dreams. And with Squarespace, you can do just that in a few simple steps. One, start off by picking a domain. Two, start through their massive list of award-winning templates, then pick the one you fall in love with. Three, add your content or products. Or use their online marketing tool to get the word out and send out email campaigns to get people coming back. And being that it's an all-in-one platform, everything you need is there, including their award-winning 24-7 support. So if you got something to share, eliminate the should've, could've, and check out a free trial by going to squarespace.com slash DIY creators to get 10% off your first purchase. And with that being said, I'll see you in the shop. Let's get started. In this video, I'm gonna show you two different concepts on how you can create this lamp. The first concept is using melamine. I first ripped that down to the desired size. In this case, the lamps I made are four inch by four inch. Now that I have everything cut down to size, I'm gonna clamp the box together as the final form. I then mark the location to drill a few pilot holes. This way I don't split the melamine while adding all the screws. Now that I have the sides completed, I'm gonna attach the bottom, but instead of using screws, I'll use hot glue. I've used this method in the past and it's proven to be pretty strong. If you don't have a table saw or you want a much simpler way to accomplish this, then you can use a juice carton. First thing you wanna do is draw an accurate line as possible going around the juice carton. Now take a utility knife and cut along the line until you cut the container in half. The only downside I saw with the carton is that it's on a flimsy side but you can always add support to keep it shape. I wanted the wood to look like it was embedded into the concrete, but I also wanted the concrete to look like it has a natural look as if it was pouring over. Getting a natural look is pretty tough, but just give it your best shot. I took it over to the bandsaw where I then shaped it up the best I could to the design that I drew out. Another method you can try is using a Dremel tool and trace the line. Then use the same Dremel tool to remove the unwanted section. And while I was at it, I also used the Dremel tool to create cavities and pockets into the piece of wood so that the cement can sit into those and hold on to it. And to make sure that the wood never separates, I'm gonna add a few screws into it and this way they can sit and be locked into the concrete. Now to make sure this chunk of wood doesn't go anywhere, I'm gonna apply hot glue right onto it and pin it in one of the corners. Before adding a piece of wood, make sure that you have clearance right in the center for your light socket. Turns out this inch and a half pipe is the same exact size as the light socket that I'm gonna use. So I covered the entire pipe with mold release with the hopes that I'll be able to pull this out later. Now if you notice, I added a lot of hot glue inside the pipe. This way when I face it down, the hot glue would pour out and then attach itself to the bottom. And it should look something like this. The next thing I'm going to do is use a piece of foam to block off the section for the power cord. And if this works out, I shouldn't have to drill any hole to pass the power cord. Just apply a little bit of hot glue onto it and just put it down in place wherever you want the power cord to exit. I'm using a fast setting cement and you can find a link to that down in the video description. And because it's fast setting, I have a limited time to get this mix going. I'm gonna go for a loose consistency because I want this to get down in all the cracks and crevices as I pour. Now if you notice, I'm adding a little bit of water at a time because I don't wanna overwater it. In the occasion that I do overwater it, I just add more mix to it to thicken it up. And right around here is when I realized I forgot to add the cement color into the mix. There are formulas that you can use to mix the right amount of mix. This way you don't overmix or undermix. In this case, I undermix and I had to mix another batch. Now I really don't go through the trouble of doing that. I normally have a good feel for how much I need. And once you have the mix poured, go ahead and vibrate this so all the air pockets and bubbles can rise to the top and give you the smoothest finish. 
For the juice carton, I'm going to follow the same concept and glue this chunk of wood inside. This time around, I remember the cement color, and the one I'm using is a charcoal. I'll have a link to that down in the video description as well. You can normally get the color in two different forms, powder and liquid. You can decide how light or dark you want your mix to be just by adding more color. If you wanted to make a lamp, just follow the same concept I showed earlier by placing the PVC pipe in the center. In this case, I'm going to make a planner so I can show you two different variations of this concept. If you're making a planner and you want a round hole, just use a cup. But if you want a square hole, consider using a smaller carton that would fit inside. Now place weight inside the cup or use tape to hold it down. So one quick tip I want to give you is when you're using this fast setting mix, it tends to get really hot. One way to keep it cool is just continuously to pour water on it throughout the curing process. Keeping it cool will prevent majority of the hairline cracks that you might see otherwise. I allowed this to sit for about an hour. I came back with some pliers and then I twist out the PVC pipe. Again, this is the fast set mix that I've used and it's the main reason I'm able to pull the mold off within an hour's time. Now to be clear, you can use just about any mix. You're just gonna have a longer wait time. At this point, the edges are sharp and that can be avoided by using silicone in the corners. You can still remove the sharpness by wet sanding the corners and giving it more of a soft round over. The next challenge at hand is to remove all the hot glue. This by far is the easiest part of the project to remove the foam. To demold the second one, I'll need to be a little more destructive. The cement always takes the shape of its form, so the side came out pretty good, but the top lip needed some attention, it was a bit rough and sharp. As a testament to how easy this project was, the hardest thing about this was to remove the hot glue. The easiest approach I could find for this is using a heat gun to soften up the glue and then scrape it off. Personally, I like the natural look of this, but I'm gonna put on a sealer on it just so that it feels like a finished product. And although you can use sealer, I'm using lacquer. I used this before and it actually leave a nice smooth finish. The PVC pipe I used was the perfect fit for this light socket. I did not expect it to fit so well, but what do you know? To wrap this up, I'm going to use hot glue to hold the lamp cord in place and also the light socket. And finally, I used felt sheets to cover up the hole in the bottom and also use it as a protection so we don't scratch any surface. And my choice of a light bulb is this vintage 40 watt dimmable LED globe. So I showed you two different methods to get this little concrete cube. You can do it with a juice carton or you can build your own form. And whichever direction you choose, it's totally up to you. Either way, have fun and build something cool.